Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on using the Fetch API in React to make HTTP requests. So using the Fetch API in React, it's much like using Fetch in plain JavaScript, but there are some unwanted interactions you can come across between Fetch and React. So that's why I'm making a video especially dedicated to using Fetch in React. So I'm using modern functional components here and I'm going to write out my Fetch request within my component before the return statement. So I do this just like I do in plain JavaScript, no difference. So I'm going to be making my fetch request to the following endpoint, recres.in forward slash API forward slash users. This is a test API. It's going to return to me a list of users with some information about them. So I'm going to be working with some real data and I'm going to be rendering this to the DOM eventually. But before I do that, I need to finish this request. So I handle the response in a then statement. I pass in a function and I have the response available to me. Now, the first thing I want to do is to check whether the response was OK. And I can do that by checking the OK property on the response object. If that evaluates to true, then it was OK. And I want to return not the response, but response with the JSON method applied. So what that's going to do is convert the response from a JSON object to a JavaScript object that I can work with that will be available to me in the next then statement. Just before I write that out, I need to handle the error if there is one. So I'll add the message server says bad response. Now in the next then statement, I now have the result available to me as a JavaScript object and I can work with that. So I'm just going to log it to the console here so we can see what comes back from the request. And if there's a problem with fetch itself, a problem connecting with the server, then this catch statement is going to run. And I'm just going to log that to the console if there is one as well. Okay, so let's take a look at that in the app now. So you see here that the data is being logged. It's contained in this data property as an array of objects. And each of the objects relates to a user. So it has information like the ID and the email, first name, last name. So just in case you were wondering, this is fictional data that this API is returning, but it looks real enough and it's good to work with. So everything was working OK there. We got the response back OK. But normally we wouldn't just be logging the result to the console. We would instead be updating the DOM with some data that we got back from the request. So I'll do that now. So to do that, I'm going to create a new bit of state called data. And then the updating function is going to be called set data. And then I'm going to set the initial value of data to null. Now it is important that you give the bit of state you've created an initial value of null so that it will equate to false. And you'll see why in a moment when we render the value of data to the DOM. But first of all, I want to update that state if the HTTP request I'm making with fetch is successful. So I call set data and I want to pass in there the object I got back and the data is stored in a property called data. Now what I'm going to want to do is to render some of that data that came back in the request to the DOM. So I'm updating the data variable at the end of the fetch request and I'm going to want to print that in the return statement. So it's an array of objects, each object relating to a user. I'm going to want to map over each of those objects and in each iteration, I'm going to have available to me the user data. Now, because this is an example, I just want to return 
some data in that object. So I'm going to be returning the emails only for each user. So I want to return userData.email and I want to place that, each one of those in a div so that each user email is on a new line. And I need to use the curly brackets there so I can access that in JavaScript. Okay, so let's take a look at this in the browser now. And you'll see when I refresh that, I'm getting a lot of errors. So it's telling me that I cannot read properties of null reading map. So the problem here is that when React is trying to update the DOM, it's doing it before this fetch request is complete. The value of data at that point is null, so there's nothing in map yet. What we'd like to do is only render to the DOM when there's some data back. Now, a trick for this in React is to use the double ampersands operator. So what this does is it will only render what's on its right hand side when the left hand side value equates to true. So initially the value of data is null, which equates to false. When the response comes back, we've got some data and it will equate to true. So if I pass in data as the left hand side value here, then the value on the right hand side is only going to render when the response comes back. So let's take a look at this in the browser now. So you can see that the emails are listed one after the other in the divs that we created. We're getting an error here that each uh, child should have a unique key prop. So we can actually amend that by saying key should be equal to user data dot ID. And then each of the children have their own separate key. So from this view, everything seems to be fine, but I've actually created an infinite loop of get requests that we can see. So what I'm going to do is after set data, where I'm updating the value of the state, I'm going to console log the response so we can see what's going on there. Now, if I return to my app, you can see that there's actually an infinite loop of get requests going on here. So why is this occurring? So the reason this is occurring is because this fetch request is being run each time this component renders. And each time the fetch request is made, the value of the state is being updated. And that's causing a re-render, which is causing the fetch request to run again, which is going to again update the state, causing a re-render, the fetch request is made again, and so on. So the way that I can get out of this infinite loop is by using the use effect hook. Now I've already imported it from the core React library. So all I need to do is to call it, pass in a function, and then this is what use effect is going to run when use effect does run. And what use effect is useful for is running a process only once or running a process only when a bit of state updates. In this case, we only want to make the fetch request once. So what you do is you pass in an empty array in the second argument position, and this is specifying to the use effect hook that you want this to run just once, and you don't want it to run again dependent upon a bit of state. If I included the state value data here, it would run just as before. In fact, if I didn't make a second argument, it would also run just as before. You need to make sure if you only want it to run once that you do pass in this empty array in the second position. So hopefully this has now solved our problem. Let's take a look in the browser. So if I refresh, the emails are still being rendered to the page and you see in the console log that fetch is only running the once now. So that is how you go about using fetch inside a functional component in React. If you found this tutorial useful, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.